YouTube, what's up, man? There's been a lot of bots lately shooting all types of hate my way just because they're not good at Madden. But you know who is good at Madden? This opponent I'm about to play. He's actually the number one ranked mutt head-to-head -head seasons player in the world. Now, I will tell you, rankings in the world, man. I remember Madden 08, I was ranked number seven in the whole world in head-to-head. -head. Just regular head-to-head. -head. There was no mutt back then. I bet some of you bots are saying, well, well it was better before mutt. Uh, anyway, I was ranked number seven in the whole world in Madden 08. I thought I was the man ranked number seven in the world. I thought I really was a top 10 Madden player in the whole world. I mean, uh, that's probably the first step. Like, you'll start playing your friends. You'll start being them. But then once you get online... And then you get a good ranking and you see your rank, man. That's the, uh, the next evolution of competition. And then you realize, bro, there's people that don't really play ranked online. The good, the best people don't really grind this leaderboard. Then you get into that competition. So the leaderboards are definitely a stepping stone for competitive men. So make sure you guys are grinding them, whether they be mutt seasons, weekend league, mutt draft, anything, man. Seeing how high you are in the rankings is always awesome. And this guy is number one, man. So, and I'll tell you, man, he's like a notch below, man. He's missing a little bit and you'll see during this gameplay. One thing I was, this guy does stream. His name is Sphinx Daddy. Sphinx Daddy, I'm like, what the hell is Sphinx Daddy? But I actually went into a stream the night after this game, man. And he's got Sphinx cats, which are like the hairless cats. Little ugly if you ask me, but you know, to each their own. And my man had a whole cat castle where the cats can climb on and everything like that. So he's a cool dude, really chill. So if you guys ever check his stream out, ever see him playing or match up with him in Weekend League, definitely a down to earth guy, not one of these little annoying kids. So let's check out this gameplay and what I did against the number one mutt head to head player in the world. Here we go, man. Now he's got Seattle Seahawks jerseys. I don't know if they're real bodish or anything, Brian Westbrook, I put him on kick returns because he won't fumble and I can do wild stuff like that, pretty much. But let's go ahead and check before the game starts. He is number one, a record of 1,928 and 802 losses. Played nearly 3,000 games of mutt head-to-head. -head. Honestly, not the worst record. Well over a 2-to-1 win-to-loss ratio. Really grinding the game. Definitely getting better. We see him running a lot of, as we start here, the big nickel, the cover three cloud, so to speak. Right there, we get cheated. Do not get our feet in on the corner route. Um, The one thing, I, ooh, as we try to throw the in route, but Brian Dawkins swats it and picks it off. The one thing about uh, Big Nickel is really safe. You know, it's really safe to play. And you see a lot of people running that cover three cloud uh, to make adjustments to you know, turn their cover two into a cover three cloud as Sean Taylor knocks the ball loose. Anthony Barr stumble recovery. We get it right back. I lo love seeing the running back fumble. We never see that anymore in Madden 20. But right there, Sean Taylor put an elbow into his face. And normally, the only time you're going to fumble is if you go back to back like that. And that's what he did. He went back to back runs, took back to back hits, and the, court, the running back was tired, put the ball on the ground. Rarely you fumble, but we got one right there. Hit the corner route to Randy Moss. We have Randy Moss and Calvin Johnson both activated as Clowney comes around that edge and sacks me right there. Uh, we got second and 19 on a 19-yard line. Looking rough. Dumped the ball off right here. We're not in a good spot to score a touchdown right here, so we're going to go ahead, try to hit this post route over the top, but Patrick Peterson is not having that. Um, one adjustment I could have did to that was go ahead and put a flat route out there to hold Patrick Peterson down so he could not drop to the back of the end zone. That's my fault. Forced the pass. I got two picks already this game. Two picks. We're feeling good. Now, he's running a tight offset. If you guys have watched me play Madden, whether it be this year or last year, I believe Madden 18 was the first year as he throws a dot corner route for a big play to get in field goal range. Oh, actually, he did not complete that. There you go. Incomplete. Boom. What do I know? Dumps off and flat. One thing, you guys, if you guys have watched me since Madden 18, I've run this tight offset as he throws this slot streak. Knocked away because I manned up that guy. I've run this tight offset for three years now. One thing about that is I kind of know everything about it. I know the weaknesses. I know what people struggle to. I know what it's good for. And honestly, as I look right here, I've tried to hit the crossing route. I hit the playmaker. dropped. But I know kind of how to slow down the basics of tight offset. As right here, I'm looking for that. I'm looking for that crossing route. Throw it late. That's what I mean about waiting until the last second throw. Even if it gets picked, you might not get his feet down. That's what I mean. Avoiding the user. Avoiding the middle of the field. But we get three points. Not looking good against this defense so far. But like I said, tight offset, I know the weaknesses. What is it good at? Max protecting, rolling out, throwing corner routes. What it's not good at, what, what most people that run tight offset are only good at rolling out and throwing corner routes. 
And, and, and once I realized this, I start playing a lot more coverage against this guy. 146 is something that's going to make him block, you know, eight people every play as we get a big pick by Ronnie Lott right there. Can we take it to the Baja? We catch a juke. We get inside the 15. Little juke. Oh, man, the fat lineman ganged up on me. Stopped me at the six-yard line. Like I said, tight offset as we, oh, we had that little hitch right there, but we get sacked. Tight offset for me, uh, you you got to make people dot you, you know, and that's what I want to do most of this game and start to realize that, you know, this guy's not very good against the coverage. That's like the next evolution as we we take a hit with Vic, but, you know, we're not going to fumble because we're over that fumbling with Michael Vic. We're over that. Not going to happen no more. But the next evolution of a tight offset player is can I beat coverage? Yes, I can beat the blitz. Yes, I can roll out and I can dot the corner out. But can I beat coverage? Essentially, that's the next thing to do. And as he tries to run a little read option there, we're all over it. Uh, so that's why I decided to hit this guy with a lot of coverage. Once again, you see, just leaving this flat open, you can have that for a pickup of, what, four yards or one yard. Get to a third and nine. He goes to another play. Nowhere to go. Throws the ball away. Fourth and nine, we're going to punt. So I feel good. This is why I kicked those two field goals because, you know, when you get the sense that your opponent can't score, just try to put as many points on the board as possible. And that's what I'm going to try to do because, the, you know, looking back, if, if he can't move the ball, how's he going to beat, you know, six points? Right there, another crossing route. We're feeling a little bit better. Getting our comfort down against this defense. Now, I'll tell you, this defense is good. Next little slant right here. Boom, Randy Moss. But if you don't have pass rush chems, what are you really doing? You know, what are these guys going to do? They're never going to get at me right there. Ooh, bounced off the hands of Terrell Owens. Second and 10, 25 seconds left in the half. Looking for this, mm, that little in route right there. Do not get it. Get to a first and goal. Boom. Drag route just like that. No time left in the second half. Boom. 13 nothing. I feel really good now. I feel like that's going to be a wrap. Uh, I don't think this guy can score. I'm going to keep running coverage. Don't give up the corner route. I'm going to man up Y. Now, a lot of times, man coverage doesn't work on these corner routes and post routes, and you have to understand that. But it's going to have a body around it, and a body around the corner route and post route is going to make him have perfect timing as he actually dots me right there on a corner route to the right side. You know, So we're feeling all right. The time has run out in the first half. He has, 30, he has zero points. I don't know if he's past midfield yet. You know, honestly. So, like I said, I'm going to bluff the blitz and play coverage every snap for the most part. Boom, he hits a corner route right there in front of Ronnie Lott. So, once again, I'm just going to bluff. You can have this flat route, especially to a receiver without an ability. The receiver without an ability, you can have him all day. Once again, he goes drag corner route. That's a great thing if you're beating the blitz if I only have three people in coverage. But if I have eight people in coverage, good luck throwing just a drag in a corner route. Right there, we knock away the corner route. I said, fourth down, what's he looking for here? Looking for the post. There's Taylor Mays in a spy. One thing, if you guys aren't doing it, we try to get busy. Can we take it to the Baja? Little juke there. Little juke here. Finally get tackled. But if you put that lurker acrobat in a spy, that 6'3 Taylor Mays, little bit more effective than nobody in a spy. The lurker went up and picked him off. So I'm telling you, he's having a lot of trouble here with the coverage, not necessarily the blitz. Uh, people are good at beating the blitz, some people, you know, and that's something you gotta realize. Is my opponent good at beating the blitz or good at beating coverage? What's his weakness? And you gotta kind of fill out your opponent about what they like and what they don't like. Cause Timmy is different than Johnny. And you know, it just goes back and forth. Uh, everybody has their own weakness. You know, And right now this guy, I feel like he does not like this eight man coverage every play. And I'm gonna stay with it. As long as we can stop this run, we'll feel good, we'll feel great. That's why I have, I actually, what's crazy that I do have now, I actually have run stopper as he throws this corner route up. Boom, Randy Moss catches it, 33 yard line. I think that's the first time he's been in field goal ranger in my side of the field. But I actually have run stopper on Taylor Mays, which is one of, I mean, one of the more effective things when you're running 146 or dollar or anything like that. As he throws a flat route here, gets him to a fourth down. Uh, he's gonna go for this. Hits another flat route here. I mean, I have a hard flat there, but he's just a little too fat. Did not get out there in time. But I do have run stopper on Taylor Mays. Um, and, and he's doing a good job when people run that inside zone or look for that. Next play, once again, once again, everybody, just eight people in coverage. Nowhere for him to really go with the football. Cover the corner route myself. Goes for another one. There's Ronnie Lott zipping him up. He's going to tap out after that. It's only three minutes left in the game. Uh, and that's what I tell you. Uh, the next level 
of tight offset players, man. You can beat the blitz, you can roll out, but add that can you beat coverage. You have to learn your opponent what they're good at and what they're not. Now I'll tell you guys, man, leaderboards are key, man, and being high in the leaderboards is awesome, but there's also levels, man. The best players in the world aren't playing the leaderboards. If you're top 10 in the leaderboards, you know, it doesn't mean that much. One in the comments, let me know if you guys ever ranked high in any type of leaderboard, whether it be weekend league, whether it be ranked seasons, whether it be mutt head to head, whatever it may be, have you ranked high in the leaderboards? Also, man, I'll tell you um, one thing about, I wish Madden had better leaderboards, a better system. Uh, Cause I feel like, although his record wasn't bad, 1,900 and 800, I feel like somebody with a record like 1,050 losses or something, I think they should maybe be a little bit higher. I think all in all, the Madden rankings for leaderboards, especially head-to-head -head regs is terrible. Really need a whole reboot on that whole leaderboard system because I do think it is a big part of Madden. So just wanted to show you guys this video of me playing the number one ranked Mutt head the head guy. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do, hit that like button and feel free to subscribe.